Hello friends out there. Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for today, devotional. Let me read to us our text for today in Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. A fool's balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath but righteousness delivers from death. Well, we know here from here that Solomon focused on about the integrity of the upright. There is the kind of an integrity that the upright exudes or portrays. Now, God does approve those who are honest in their professions. Honesty and dishonesty are Two things that we can see in a person, especially in their dealings towards others, especially in business. A dishonest gain is an abomination to the Lord. But a person who is honest about his business, God will commend him. On the other hand, God has a strong displeasure for those who are dishonest in their business dealings. In the book of Amos, the prophet there exposed the crooked businessmen during his time who are looking forward to the end of religious holidays so that they can pursue their crooked business practices. They were like the merchants and uh, vendors during the time when Jesus went into the temple and he overturned everything. And out of his anger, he over destroyed all this and let the animals go free. So this People who are greedy because of their love for money, they ask in Amos chapter 8, verse 5, When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the epa small and the shekel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances? Now, these are the desires of those who are making the religious holidays and practices and rituals as a source of income and business for these people who are greedy for money. When we move to verse 2, Solomon said that the outcome of pride is disgrace. And the word pride is also means arrogance. One who claims he has no need for God in his life. One who is in self-indulgent living and has full of ego. He is full of himself. He believes that he is the master of his own fate, if it is, but he fails to understand that pride goes before a fall. That's what we see in John 14, verse 12, that there seems a way that is right before a man, but the end of his death. In the New Testament, there is an example of an arrogant person in the person of King Herod in Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to 23, wherein everyone shouted that he was a god and not a man. Rather than deflect such praise, rather than discouraging the people, he was so arrogant, he embraced it. Immediately, Herod's pride turned to disgrace. In Acts chapter 12, verse 23, an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory. And he was eaten by worms and breath his last. An example also in the new in the Old Testament, the mean is King Nebuchadnezzar, who also was struck by the Lord with a certain disease that he was crawling like an animal on the ground because of his pride. What about the righteous person? The righteous person, however, is full of integrity. The Hebrew root word for integrity is. Tuma, which is also translated as blameless, a person who is blameless. It does not mean that the blameless person is perfect, but he is somebody who is morally upright that you cannot pin down something to criticize that person. This indicates moral wholeness or not having any moral blemish. This does not mean a person is perfectly free from all sin. As he follows the Lord's instructions and his words, he is safe and secure. But the treacherous will end up in destruction. The treacherous will, at the end, will regret, like 
Judas. He is our example who was treacherous. He betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ because he was greedy for money. And he ended his life tragically. The righteous is the eternally safe and secure. That's what we learned just the other day. They do not fear death. According to John chapter 3, verse 36, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ is not condemned. But he who does not believe, they are condemned already. They are clothed in the righteousness of Christ because by faith, the righteousness of Christ is clothed upon them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, Jesus is our righteousness. They enjoy the victory over death, and when they actually will die in this world, they enter the presence of Christ. To be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. And that's why Paul, in much confidence, he said, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. However, the wicked, those who rely on money instead of God, they will not only lose their wealth in eternity, but even here in this world, they may lose everything. They don't trust in riches. Um, the, the righteous do not just trust in riches, but the righteous trust in Christ alone and nothing else and nobody else. Why? Because riches do not profit in the day of wrath. Riches cannot buy salvation. What can save us is the righteousness of Christ clothed upon each one of us by faith. It's his righteousness. So today, if you are not yet a believer of Christ, you need to repent of your sins and receive the Lord Jesus Christ so that his righteousness will become your right righteousness. His righteousness will be clothed upon you so that before the eyes of God the Father, you are righteous. You are blameless. So thankfully, we who are helpless, hopeless because of our sin, and we cannot be righteous, we are full of sinners, have now a hope because of what Christ did at the cross, because our salvation and our righteousness is free in Christ. You just need to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he promised that those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And they will be eternally secured and righteous before the eyes of God. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Father, we recognize that we cannot be perfect. We cannot obey your will many times. But thank you, Lord, that you do not deal us according to our sins, but by virtue of your grace and mercies. Thank you that you can forgive us of our sins and that we'll be able to settle our sins before you so that we become blameless because our sins are washed away by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, the Father, that there is this privilege that we can be clean and righteous and pure before your eyes, not because we are perfect by ourselves, but because of the righteousness of Christ covering us, Lord. Thank you so, so much for today's devotional. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.